Hi everyone, this is Brittany Bond, and welcome back to the podcast. If you can see visually, my eyes are very red right now because <laughs> I didn't go to bed till like 4 a.m. Um, because I hosted the play party last night, and it was so juicy, so so many things that I'm going to share with you in this episode, um, and I just felt really excited to make a podcast while the energy is fresh. I realize I need to drink some water there. <laughs> um, so yeah, get cozy. We're going to have a great time in this podcast. I'm going to share all the downloads along with all the stories. Of course, not mentioning anyone's names, protect confidentiality, all the things. But, you know, we go deep in these. Ah, so I invite you to take a deep breath with me and like... I hope that you're doing something right now that brings you a lot of joy, whether it's walking in nature, or eating something yummy, or being cozy somewhere and watching this on the screen. I've had a lot of you send me uh, video clips of you watching the, the YouTube of this, the video of it, while you're in nature. And I just love that so much. Like, I just think it's really cute. So if you ever want to send those to me, it makes me really happy. Ah, okay, so play party. Uh, first off, I, you know, I, I actually wasn't originally supposed to be, <laughs> supposed to be, what is supposed to be, what's planned, what is, what is anything, right? Um, but my original physical mind plan was I was going to stay in the north until I left for Burning Man. So I was going to be in Chiang Mai or deep in nature somewhere working on all the courses that I'm making for you guys, all these experiences and retreats and building these out with my friends up there who live up there. And also just getting some energetic space from everything that has been uh, happening in my life recently. If you've watched any of my previous podcasts, you know what I'm talking about. Um, and there was a situation that happened where I really needed to make a decision if I was going to do the same loop of disempowerment. I'm not going to go into the situation because it's still pretty fresh. One day maybe I'll share it with you. But it was basically something that had already come up. You know, like everything in life is a loop. If we don't learn the lesson, it's going to happen later on with someone new in a different situation. But it's a frequency. It's an energy. And the energy is asking us, are we going to step into our power? Are we going to learn this lesson? Or are we going to allow ourselves to be disempowered or we going, you know, basically what is our belief about ourselves and what we deserve and the situation and are we going to act in a way where we trust the universe, we trust this knowingness. And I'm really grateful that I have amazing support of soul family and just people in my life who really understand that I am this very powerful creature that just decided to pop into this timeline and be like, hi, 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 I'm here to shine my light. And also, I come in the form of a human body who is one of the most sensitive bodies that I have encountered. Um, so that combination is a really interesting one because on the surface, many people feel, oh, Brittany, she's got it. You know, she doesn't need any support. She's got it. And for most of the time, that is actually true. But there are certain things related to my home, related to romantic relationships that are kind of my um, Achilles heel. They're my kryptonite. They're my blind spot. And this is the moment when I really need that support. And so I'm really grateful that I had that support. And I made a choice to shift my story, to empower myself, to, you know, really trust the universe. And I came back to the island. I handled some stuff. It sounds so dramatic when I say it like that, and I'm not telling you what it is. It was actually very dramatic. Uh, when I tell people the story, they're like, what the fuck? <laughs> and at the same time, I also really believe that what we say out loud creates the frequency that we vibrate to. So I actually don't want to share the story because the story I want to share with you is the fact that I empowered myself and it all worked out and I trusted the universe. So anyways, I got back here last Saturday and in the, I don't know if you can hear it. I think the mic's really good, but my beautiful cleaning ladies are here in the background cleaning up the party. <laughs> they came in this morning at 10 a.m. Like I leave the key in a certain spot outside for them. And I'm like fully asleep, like deep in dreamland. And they come in and they're just like, you know, 
singing and just the best like Burmese they're from Myanmar um, they're Burmese women and they're like family vibrations so like they come in and they just they've cleaned up so many play players like sometimes I wonder what do they think when they come in and like like literally I'll show you like this if you're watching visually this was on the counter like the kitchen counter along with coconut oil and someone's underwear and you know just like things are everywhere and there's stains all over the sheets and like uh, and they just they just sing and clean and laugh and I'm just sleeping and it just feels like I'm like nestled in my mom's house and she's cleaning and I'm just resting. That's what it feels like. Definitely mom vibes. So anyways, back to my story. Last Saturday, I got back to the island. I had no plans to make a, a play party. I was like, you know, I was in the middle of launching the course, like so much preparation to go to America, like one from an emotional standpoint and also from a, um, from a just like literal logical plan. Like going to Burning Man is a lot of prep and I am very grateful that I already have like a lot of friends who are doing a lot of the prep for me. Like thank you Raquel, one of my good friends who's like kind of leading us on this group because she's been before and she has the camper van. Um, but at the same time there is a lot of planning and so and also like managing stuff with my house of like who's going to be here when I'm gone and like just dealing with lots of things. And still, I always listen to the intuitive leads from the universe and the whispers of my soul. And I have a Vanilla Vanilla, the name of my play party, if you don't know, is called Vanilla Vanilla. And I have a group chat um, with, I don't know, like almost 400 people in there. And this is like people from all over the world who've come to the experience the play party experience in either Berlin or here in Copenhagen where I posted them and many like I think five different people were like is there gonna be a play party soon I want to come to a play party can we do another one and so I was like okay Brittany do I want to do a play party and I always sleep on it so I slept on it and Sunday morning I woke up and I was like yeah, I fucking want to do a play party. Let's go. <laughs> so I just announced that I was like, let's do this uh, like a week from like, you know, less than a week from now on Saturday. And I chose and I declared and I asked and I prayed to the universe like, okay, this is what I choose. 45 amazing, lovely souls, fully supported by a team of women who, you know, uh, help me set up, help me host, hold the space, make it beautiful, set the vibration, right? And um, this is being, this is all like being said in the fact that, uh, most of my girlfriends are not on the island right now. So, uh, I was like, I don't know where these women are coming from, but I would love to have, you know, at least five to 10 women who are hosting this with me. And the women came universally aligned. Uh, this, the lovely souls came. We actually had way too many people trying to get in it's like the island doesn't have a low season anymore like technically right now it's kind of supposed to be low season but it's not it's full so I had to turn down another like 15 people who I actually wanted to come because they looked they seemed really amazing vibrationally and everything but I was like the most I've ever had in this specific villa is 58 people for a play party and it's a three bedroom three bathroom villa um but that was way too many people. Like, I had people complaining. I think I even had one girl that was like, I was on the verge of, like, a energetic panic attack. There was too much energy in the space. And I was like, I'm really sorry. I'm never going to do that again. So I cap it now at 45 to 50 people. And um, I usually confirm about 50 people and then 45 come because, like, the last minute things are always happening and people that come and can't come and all this stuff. So anyways, we had 45 people. They showed up. And this, t again, was... Uh, what I was saying in my last podcast, um, if you haven't listened to that, I highly recommend. It's um, called, I think, My New Partner is So Amazing or something like this. Let me see. My New Partner is So, yeah. No, My New Partner is So Amazing. I really recommend listening to that one or watching it if you haven't. But um, in that one, I was talking about how I've spent a lot of time in the past wasting my energy by worrying about situations instead of... <sighs> I just realized I wanted to take a deep breath. Hold on. I might need to take a deep breath while I drink some chai. I spent a lot of time, and I would say, yeah, straight up wasted my energy by w allowing my physical mind to be super worried. Like, I would I would say to the universe, hey, I would love this thing. I, I'm here to offer this experience. I'm here to create this beautiful 
magical transformation opportunity for everyone. And like, I'm basically, I'm here to serve. I'm here to show up. I'm here to serve. Let's do this. But then I would doubt whether the people would come. I would doubt whether it would work out. I would doubt whether I would have the support. And I just don't do that anymore. I just am like, let's do this. Okay, I'm here. I'm showing up. The universe is going to take care of the rest. God, source, whatever you want to call it. And whatever happens is what is meant to happen. I think that's the most important thing is like, let go of the expectation. So what if only 30 people came? What if no one came and I canceled the party? Okay. Like I really at this point, I'm, <laughs> I'm not just saying this. Like I actually am in this vibration where it is not up to me. It is not, it is not reflecting on my ego. It's not, you know, it's, it's literally not about me. It's just me showing up and serving and trusting that the universe has the rest and has my back. And so this week I, I did a lot of beautiful things in the 3d reality for myself and for other people and for, for you, for the impact I'm making in the world, La- launching this like 21 day a transformation experience on 888, you know, on Thursday with the, I think it was Thursday. Yeah, Thursday. <laughs> Days, words, wh- what is time? Um, and so many of you have signed up already. I'm just like, wow, wow, wow. I'm so excited for this experience. And so many more that are saying that they're going to sign up soon. So if you haven't gotten in on that, I highly recommend it's going to be life changing. And it's also just the beginning of me stepping into this expansion of all the things that I'm ready to share with the world, you know? Yeah? Okay. Okay, thank you. I love Pichu. If it, you don't know Pichu, she's amazing. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. Ah, so grateful for all the people in my life that support me. Um, what was I saying? So anyways, I trusted the universe. Everything flowed amazing when it came to the people showing up. And also, I just had so much fun this week. Like, there were so many times where I was, like, just completely allowing my higher self, my soul, to, like, guide me in whatever direction, wherever. I, like, I got on my scooter and I had, like, you know, to-do list things. But then suddenly I would be here and I would just be like, why, why am I here? And then I would meet someone that I was meant to meet or I would buy something that really brought me a lot of joy or, you know, like whatever. So I was like, really, I invite you to do this. Like I call it flow days where you just get up and you like flow through the day. Like you just follow like the next thing that's in your head to do, whether it's go to this coffee shop, go to the park, and then you just show up there and you just see what happens and then you follow the next intuitive lead. And it's so much fun. Anyways, oh, I think I was talking about the course. Highly recommend joining that. I will put the link in below. And also, you know, booking a lot of stuff for Burning Man and just I've been going to the gym every day. It's amazing. Anyway, so I'm going to get back into the play party experience. Also, I brought a bunch of stuff in here that I want to show you. So this is like another thing that we had. Uh, it's a little whip. Um, if Do you know what shabari is? Have you guys ever heard of this? So this is shabari ropes. So shabari is like where you tie someone up. I love shabari. There's something like when you like to be tied up, it's called a rope bunny, like ropes, <laughs> like a rope bunny. And for me, it's actually, it, yes, it can be a very sexual experience depending on who t- um, who's being tied up, who's tying me up. But for me, the reason why I love to be a rope bunny, to be tied up, is because I love the, the energy play of feeling safe enough with someone to surrender. And like for me, that is, wow, that is such a healing experience, especially like for me, of course, I have to feel safe with the person. And it's, it's so beautiful. And I've had such amazing experiences over the years. And what I've realized is, you know, so at the beginning, once when s- when s- you're having a session with someone where they tie you up, you go over boundaries, consent. And usually for me, um, even like, so I have someone that I really love. He has done a lot of, um, he's my friend James. He used to do like Shibari art classes here when this house was a community space. Um, and it was literally like every Wednesday, whoever wanted to come would come. And then whoever wanted to be tied up, they would put their names in a hat. And then everyone else, so like he'd pick like three names and he would tie them up and then there'd be like 10 or 15 other people and they would like draw or paint the person being tied up. 
And it was all, it was, well, I would say 99% women in this whole experience, uh, like the art class. So it was just really cool and I loved it. It was very empowering for everyone involved. Anyway, so that's my friend James. But so when, when James ties me up, he, I was just, he lives in Chiang Mai now and I was just up there and I did a session with him. And every time w in the beginning we go over like, so how do you want this experience to go? Um, and the reason why I do that is that, you know, once the boundaries are set, this is everything. Communication is everything. Because once the boundaries are set, then you're I was able, I am able to drop into the experience and release and surrender and let go. And so for me, what I usually say, like with James or like just anyone that I'm not like dating, you know, is uh, I love a sensual experience. So basically you can touch me everywhere except for my sexual organs, like, you know, my, my pussy or my boobs uh, and no kissing. So, you know, you can kiss me on my neck, you can, you know, you can like hug me, you know, this whole thing. And oh my gosh, it's such a beautiful, sensual experience. And I went, when I went with James to James in Chiang Mai, I brought one of my friends who was a guy and uh, in his tie. <laughs> uh, so it was like a very new experience for him to see because he just thought like, oh, I thought it had to be sexual. I thought it had to be like foreplay to sex. And I didn't realize it could just be there's this whole in between of like sensual play that doesn't need to lead to anything sexual and can be very healing and just like really juicy and amazing. So anyways, that happens at the play party like yesterday. And I wanted to share some other I wrote down some notes, um, some other things that happened that I thought were really fun. So one woman brought um, vegan chocolate sauce and it was like really fun because we got some chopsticks and <laughs> she demonstrated like uh, drip drippling the chocolate all over s like someone's body and then like licking it off. And then so the throughout the rest of the night, like uh, it would usually be like uh, I saw, well, I'll just say what I saw, a guy doing that over a woman's nipples and then like licking her nipples and like turning her on and oh, wow. Chocolate sauce is great. I also recommend vegan whipped cream. I've um, done that as an experience. Um, I personally love to put that on a man's penis and lick it off. Um, there's so much fun stuff that does not involve penetration. That's what I'm inspiring all of you. Um, another guy brought a body paint experience. So he messaged me and he was like, um, you know, I, I do this in Berlin and, and it, he showed me and it was like, it was like graffiti art, like professional graffiti art, body paint that he was doing on people's bodies. And I was like, this is so cool. And so he just had a little station and he was like setting that up and like offer this as an experience. And it was like very sensual also because it was happening right in like the kink room, which is on our front balcony. We turn it into a tea room and it looks into the front room with like, and it's like got a red light. So it's like red light district. And I always say that watching is also participating if it's done with the energy of honoring the experience of everyone that you're watching. So, and the tea room is kind of like a decompression zone where everyone's hanging out, chilling, you know, like meeting each other and then being like, do you want to go inside and play with me? Or like, how is your experience going? So it's like a real like safe zone to take a break because there's a lot of energy happening in the space. And for me, that's actually a really important part of the experience for our nervous system because we're not meant to just be ramped up, uh, overstimulated. We're meant to, you know, come back in our body and like, well, be in our bodies the whole time, but like drop into a calm nervous system state and then, you know, come back up and then, ba you know. So anyway, so people are in there drinking tea and then looking into the front room. So it's like this kind of like movie display thing. And the guy was like doing body paints on someone and then in the background on the bed, another guy's like, you know, dribbling chocolate sauce on a woman, like licking it off of her and then someone's getting tied up. And I was just like, I was looking, I turned to someone and we were just like, what is our life? This is amazing. <laughs> like, are we in a movie? <laughs> yeah, literally, I, I say this all the time. I'm like, someone's going to make a movie about my life because like, this is, someone needs to see this. Like, this is amazing. Um, oh, and then a beautiful fairy, one of my fairy queens um, that helped me come and set up and host the space. She brought rose uh, roses, like beautiful red roses and she demonstrated at the beginning before we went into the play party um to everyone about they call it a rose water blessing so you like dip the roses like f like you don't take the petals apart you leave it as a full rose and you dip it in and then you like um essentially and slowly like 
bring the rose over the whole person's body and you like bless them. Like, so this is this energy of like honoring and worshiping and just <sighs> like creating safety and also like the beautiful smell of the rose and just, I love everything like the sensual, like sensual um, energy for me. This kind of energy is so beautiful because as a society, we're programmed to, through porn, to go right into uh, sexual energy. So it's just like penetration to the goal of orgasm. But sex is energy flow in between our bodies. And in order to create a, a strong energy flow, we need to turn on our bodies. And we turn on our bodies through our senses. And there's so many beautiful and amazing ways for us to turn on our bodies senses through all these different central type of things like senses like literally sight s smell hearing touching like it's anything that is a way that our body takes in information and I love all the creative ways that everyone was doing this yesterday um and I show yeah I showed you the whips like there was so much going on um so I'll speak from my experience of why I loved the play party <coughs> If you don't know what the like anything that happens at the play party, I'll put the link in below. I have like a little five minute video that just like totally describes like what it is, why I started it. Um, but basically, everyone comes in and I tell them like you have to show up by s like doors open at six. You have to be there by six thirty, and then I do about a half an hour of like an intro round where I drop them in their bodies. We do breathing, and then I just share, yeah, why I started the space. Here's the boundaries of the play party. Uh, here's what you need to feel safe and you know just kind of like setting the vibration of like this is what we're doing together we're going through an energetic portal together you know we're all co-creating this experience so every time it's different because it depends on your energy of how you show up and then we do about an hour of games which is eye gazing you know like sitting them straight uh, sit, having people pair off into groups of two and and holding hands and looking each other in the eyes. And this is really beautiful. If you're not a Copa Young person, you might be like, what the fuck is that? But it actually is such a simple way to drop you in your body. And when you hold hands with someone, you actually align your vibration because your pulse um, connects to each other and then your heartbeats align. And then you, and then I invite everyone to take a deep breath together. <sighs> And then, you know, they start dropping in their bodies, feeling safe, feeling connected to the person. And every game I switch it up with different partners. Um, and then I do one around like um, talking about what fears you have, what desires you have. And like that's a talking game. And then one about um, how do you like to be touched? So it's like just from their shoulders, like to the bottom of their hands, like this is the safe zone of how you can touch each other and then literally like talk about and show each other how do you like to be touched and and then it's like a couple minutes of massaging each other and then it sh switch partners so everyone gets an opportunity to express how they like to be touched receive that give feedback because this is another thing too that's why i call it like pleasure school because we go to school to learn all this stuff but we're not taught how to give and receive pleasure in a way that feels good in our bodies, in a way that feels safe. And communication is a huge part of this. So, like, I had a guy tell me afterwards, he was like, wow, that was such a, like, a big, he's like, it was such a simple exercise, but it was such a powerful one for me because he's like, I've never thought about just expressing how I like to be touched. I've never asked someone, how, how do you like to be touched? It's like we go around just like hoping someone guesses and worried we're gonna you know, hurt their self-esteem if we tell them what we like or we tell them we don't like that. And so we just like kind of lay there like frozen, like I hope they figure it out. It's like, that's so dumb, you know? Like, I, and I don't, I'm not judging that. I have been there myself. It's such a program that we have. And also I say this a lot in the play parties. I'm like, we're gonna take this programming and just throw it out the window tonight. Like we're in this energy vortex together. We're, that everything's a safe zone, everything is communicated. Everything is safe to be communicated. We're encouraging it. And then I even have people like, um, you know, ask them, how is this, how does this feel for you? Like check in like throughout the massage and, 
And if, if, and if it's working for you, tell the person, yeah, that's amazing. Give them positive feedback. We all want positive. And if it's, if you want something adjusted, just be like, oh, this is nice, but I actually like more of this. And just like literally baby steps teaching people how to communicate what they would like to give and receive. And it's all so simple and so powerful. I love it so much. And then we did a boundaries game where I had a guy and a girl like sit across from each other. And I had the women go first where they asked the man for two minutes everything, like ask them every question that they could about like, can I do, can I do this? Can I have a hug? Can I get a massage from you? Can I touch you? And the guy for two minutes just has to say no. <laughs> and it was so funny because everyone was laughing because like I had the women go first, right? And so a lot of the men were telling me after... I really wanted to say yes. I actually wanted to, whatever they were offering. Like, can I give you a massage? Can you kiss me? And they were like, no, no, I'm sorry. I can't, no. <laughs> but it was to practice this, this feeling, the somatic, you know, feeling in your body, this is somatic experience of what does it feel like to say no? And is it okay in my body f to say no? Because we have such programming in a society to people please. And that saying no is rejecting that person when it's not actually doing that at all saying no is you honoring your body and what you need in your body at that moment and has nothing to do with the other person and then I had you know it flipped and then the women were the ones who were saying no and I just loved it because people were laughing and having such a good time with this game and they also it was really like really a, a hitting home like it was working the the point of the game was coming across because I asked them afterwards, like, how was that for you? And I actually had a lot of men speak up and say, it was really hard for me to say no. And I was like, why was it? Like, I'm like, what? Why was it hard for you to say no? And they're like, because we get so many no, like as men, we're so programmed to go up and, and um, go up and like ask for things, you know, like they're the ones who are programmed to go pr approach, right? So they're used to getting a no. They, they actually have a lot of experience with that. But he was like, one of this one guy was like, I can't tell you how many times he's like, I, I, he's, he said more times than I would like to admit. I've had a very, very beautiful woman come up and, you know, ask me to engage with her romantically. And I have such a hard time saying no, because I know that if I do, or I feel like if I do, she will take it as like a, you know, a, a self, it will be bad for her self-esteem. She will take it really personally. And I was like, wow, this is super, even for me, this is super eye-opening. And I was sharing with the group after that. I was like, just so you know, like the first time I've ever been rejected was in my own play party. I asked a guy, do you want to make out with me? Do you want to kiss? And he said, no. <laughs> and I was like, oh, this is what this feels like. I've never had someone tell me no before. And it was, it was like, shocking like it, I didn't I'm trying to how did I process that I didn't take it personally like I wasn't like oh I'm not beautiful or he doesn't like me I was more like um because I was hosting the play party I was more like oh I hope that I didn't make him feel uncomfortable that was more of why what I was feeling in that situation which I talked to him later and I he didn't but it was just funny um because it was like I, I was like, oh, this is how people feel when they get told no romantically. I'm like, this is a weird feeling because you're just like, that's all this energy of like, hey, you wanted to, and, oh, okay. <laughs> and so this is what I was telling people last night. I was like, in this experience, it's really beautiful to express your boundaries. And when someone tells you no, tell yourself in your head, this is not about you. This is them honoring what they need in that moment. And like, that's beautiful. We want that because if they said yes, that is not a good energy exchange when they actually mean no, right? And also flow with the energy. So even if someone tells you no, like five seconds later, someone else could tell you yes. Like, it's, so it's just, there is so many people here that are lovely souls. You're going to have whatever experience you're meant to have. It's all beautiful. And if you're in this energy of just like positive flowy energy, you're going to have a great time. Um, and so people were saying that, that game of like the boundaries was really fun and also super effective. And then we did like a men's and women's circle, which I love. And then um, we did a bunch of games. I'm not going to go into all of them, but those were the ones that I really wanted to share with you because they were super fun for me. Um, and, you know, this is one of the, the 
the last play party experience I went in, I did, um, I did it with, like, I was romantically seeing Josh, the guy that I did that. I did a podcast recently titled Am I in Love Again? Highly recommend watching that one if you haven't. Uh, it's with my friend Josh. And at the time, like, we had a little love bubble for a minute. And I, I was in that love bubble when I hosted the last play party, right? So this play party was the first one since I've been single where I'm hosting it completely in a sovereign, my own energy. Like I'm not romantically connected to anyone who is coming to the play party. I'm not romantically connected to anyone, you know, like in general. And so I, from a personal experience level, wasn't really sure what was going to, like I knew I was gonna be a, it was going to be a good party. I was going to host a really nice experience. And also from, from me personally, I was like, I don't know if there's anyone coming that I'm going to have a nice experience with on a romantic, sexual, sensual, caring, touch, whatever level. Um, and I had a, I had a really good time. <laughs> so I'll share some connections with you that I really enjoyed. So the first one was, um, I had a lot of people come up to me last night and say, I listen to every single one of your podcasts and like people that, um, I really respect and I really honor and I value their opinion. And they're just like, yeah, I send your podcast to everyone. You know, like whenever someone tells me they're having a hard time, I'm like, listen to Brittany's podcast. And I was like, wow, like I got a lot of um, verbal affirmation last night, like from the universe through these beautiful souls that I am on path and my vibration is really shining through. And that, thank you. Thank you for all of you who are sharing that positive feedback energy with me. Because it motivates me to keep going and to keep shining my light. Uh, and someone actually asked me on one of the comments in the last episode, like, have you always been this confident and um, like, and like very sovereign? Sovereign means like completely in your own power and your own energy. And the answer is no. <laughs> um, and I would say it's less about me being this confident in my energy and more about me feeling safe to shine my energy brightly. <sighs> what does that mean? T oh, I'm going to drink some chai, so take a deep breath. I invite you. Mm, so yummy. Oh, my God. I woke up this morning, and, you know, the cleaning people were here, cleaning ladies. And then I was, like, laying in bed, like, making some Insta stories, just, like, having a great time, celebrating the party in my head and with myself. And, and then one of the cleaning ladies knocks on my door, and I thought they wanted to come in and clean. And I go, and they were, like, delivery. <laughs> and my friend, one of my beautiful friends, um, he came by and brought me, like, a vegan chai, some, like, vegan gluten-free muffins. And I was just, like, and he just dropped them off and left. Like, doesn't want anything from me. Is not trying to get my energy in any way, just pure, unconditional love. And I was just like, wow, I am so grateful for my soul family, for these beautiful souls in my life that show up in a way that is like nourishing and actually supportive. And they're doing it because they just love me. They don't need anything from me. They don't want anything from me. It is pure, unconditional love and support. So grateful. Thank you, Alistair, for the chai and the muffins. I love you. Okay, back to my story. I think I'm going like tangential here because very little sleep. But um, <laughs> what was my story? I was saying, oh, so the vibration that you are witnessing and that you are receiving. Also, some of you said last night that you listen to my podcast, you watch me on YouTube, but they're like, your energy in person is a whole le other level of experience. And I was like, what does that mean? They're just like, it's just, it's this like huge aura that you have and it's just penetrating everything in a beautiful, like yummy, sensual way. And they were just like, this one guy was like, it was just, it's very beautiful to receive your energy and to be like in your energy. So thank you for that. And I was like, wow, that's amazing. Thank you. <laughs> like again, like, wow, so many beautiful affirmations. But what I'm trying to say is this vibration has, is who I am. This is my authentic self. For most of my life, I have not felt safe to allow this vibration out. So imagine like a little girl who has been abused, which was me growing up in many different ways, and just didn't feel safe, so like the energy of constriction. And then what I realized was that I thought being in a rom romantic relationship with a man was creating this safety for me. 
And so when I would get with a partner, I would be dating someone, I would let myself shine a little bit brighter and a little bit more in some, it's funny, I say that and actually I don't agree with that. Wow. That's what I thought was happening because in some ways I felt safe. But in other ways, the energy exchange between me and my past partners was a lot of them wanted to be the one shining the brightest. And so in some ways they would disempower me, even if it was on a subconscious level, because they wanted to feel more powerful than me in order to feel worthy of being with me. (laughs) That's a download for you. (laughs) Wow. I'm realizing this as I say it out loud because I was like, it's like this like level of like, I felt like this was creating safety, but it's just because this type of man I was dating reminds me of my father who uh, on a like societal level appears to be very powerful, has a lot of money, you know, alpha male, but from an emotional like grounded level in the home environment and supportive level of like actually me coming into my own sovereign power and sharing my light with the world. Um, I, I felt like they were cool with me shining my light as long as it didn't outshine theirs. And so now that I'm on my own and I feel safe to be on my own and I feel safe to be in my sovereign like power, which means like me being completely in my own empowerment And, you know, everything that I move through the world, however I act, is me being my full authentic self. (sighs) That's That's the energy that you're receiving. That is the vibration of, I guess this person said confidence. But for me, it's just me feeling safe to be myself. And I think if we really ask ourselves, most of us are just asking, is it safe to be myself? Is it safe to be myself and receive connection and receive all of my heart's desires? Because as a society, we've been programmed that we have to fit into these boxes of what our family wants us to be, what our religion wants us to be, what our government wants us to be in order to feel this connection and safety. And and I've been in a reality growing up where like literally that was my survival. I had to do that. I had to, at least on the surface, accommodate what my religion wanted, what my father wanted, you know, blah, 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 blah. But as I left that, like for me, I went through such an extreme version of that, that it was so uncomfortable that for me, it was like, I, I, I'm going to either kill myself or I'm going to leave. Like it was that extreme for most people the uncomfortable levelness level, the uncomfortableness level doesn't get high enough for them to actually make a shift in their life. So they end up leave, living this life that is half-baked. It's like, you know, it's like nobody wants that. Nobody wants like a half-baked life in the sense. <laughs> like, I really like that expression, but I don't think I can already tell in my vibration that's not landing for a lot of you. So imagine you are like, cooking something and you cook it only halfway that is not going to taste very good so most people are living their life just halfway living in the sense that they actually feel this very high level of frustration because they can tell on a soul level they're not living their life to their fullest they're not being their most authentic self but they're not uncomfortable enough yet to shift and like come out and be themselves all the way in order for them to feel this authentic sovereign, which is actually what it is, is like the most amount of universal energy going through your body at one time that's possible. And feeling just so satisfied with your life and just feeling this like immense joy and gratitude that you even get to play this game of life and existence and like, oh my God, I'm so grateful for being alive. And I'm saying this from the perspective of someone who most of my life I've spent very frustrated and feeling very unsafe. So if I was able to move through that, you are able to move through that. So don't look at me as like, oh, I could never do that. No, look at me as an example of if Brittany can move through all that bullshit (laughs) and come out the other side and transmute it, then I can too. Like she is a living example of what is possible, how we can transmute our biggest heartaches into the biggest gifts that we can give the world. So whatever you're going through right now, even if it feels insurmountable, 
even if it feels like you are never going to be able to get through this and come out the other side and feel good again, you will get through it. You are going to be okay. You are okay right now. You are safe in your body. You are divinely guided and loved by the universe, God, source. It has your back. It wants you to succeed. And you're doing great just for being you. And the most important thing you could do right now (sighs) is take a deep breath. Go into gratitude. Go into what do you enjoy about your life? What are you grateful for? And, al- and turn the rest of it over to the universe. Turn the rest of it over to God's source and just declare out loud, I am divinely guided and protected. Everything works out for me. Everything is for my benefit. I am safe in my body. What you say out loud programs your subconscious brain, which then gets reflected by your external reality. What you say out loud is a magnet to attract in what you want in your life. Do not waste your words complaining about your life. You are only going to attract in more things to complain about. Even if it goes against all of our society programming, we are programmed as a society, we're programmed to connect through complaining with. You show up to your friend, especially in England. Oh my God, I lived in London for a while. This weather is terrible. This thing is terrible. My my job is terrible. My boss is terrible. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel you. Yeah, mm-hmm, yeah. I feel you. Mm-hmm. This is also terrible. And then it's like, what frequency are you attracting in? Do you really want more of that frequency in your life? No, thank you. You know what I do, and I invite this for you is when you get with your friends before anyone starts complaining. Say, I want to try something new. What are you celebrating in your life right now? And if they're like, oh, I don't want to, I don't want to uh, appear to be egotistical. I don't want to, and, and then you start as an example. I'm celebrating in my life that I spoke up for myself today. I'm celebrating that I chose to have an abundance mindset about this thing. And then it turned out beautifully and I was able to get this abundance. Set the tone, set the vibration of positive upward spiral. And then you know what will happen? People will fucking love it. You will feel better from that connection. They will feel better. You will both go home feeling more expanded energy. And then you will attract in more of those beautiful things that you were just celebrating. And then you will program your subconscious mind, which will attract it in. It's beautiful. Okay, hold on. Back to the play party. I got a little distracted. Again, low sleep. But I think you guys are all enjoying this. I know you are. I know you are. (laughs) Just kidding. (laughs) Like, I feel like lately, I've because I've been spending so much time alone, I've just been like laughing at myself and with myself. I'm like those crazy old people that are just like, oh yeah, that was funny. Mm-hmm. And I'm like talking to myself out loud and I'm having the best time. I don't even give a fuck. I'm just like dating. I'm literally dating myself for the first time and like appreciating how amazing I am instead of needing to find an external validation for that. I don't need, I, I'm good. I have it all inside of me. It's all here. You also have it all inside of you. I invite you to talk to yourself more, give yourself affirmations out loud. Like last night when the play party ended, I meditated and I did some rompe and I said out loud to myself, I am so proud of you, Brittany. You did an amazing job. You showed up, you allowed the universe to make everything work out perfectly, and you enjoyed yourself. I'm so proud of you. Ah, it was amazing. Okay, so I want to talk about connections that I had. So one man came up to me, and he said, I really would love to talk to you because um, I listened to some of your podcasts, and I feel like we have such a similar story. And I was like, People don't say this to me often, so I'm like, let's sit, like let's go outside and sit down in the tea room, and I would love to hear what do you what do you mean. And so we went outside and we sat down, and he's like, I grew up um, in a also a really religious community. He grew up um, Orthodox Jew in Israel, uh, and he's like, I've always been very sexual, and you know. Um, I also have been building businesses since I was 18. Like, I'm an entrepreneur, and I'm always just like, you know, my brain is always going, 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 and I just don't fit into the box of the religion that I grew up in. But, you know, 
the Jewish community in Israel is so beautiful in the sense that they're very community driven. But if you don't fit into the religion part of that, it's it's changing now, he said, but like when he was growing up, it was like, you know, you're either in or you're out. And that's very similar to how I grew up. Like literally your family will not talk to you. And in Israel, this is this is like everyone is this religion. So it's not like oh, I can just go over here and hang out with people. It's like, you know, your job, your whole, your friend, your whole, your whole life is connected to this. So it is, it is, um, emotional survival. It is financial survival. It is pure survival sometimes to stay in this and go along with it. So he ended up traveling and he's also been to over 70 countries, which I was like, how is this? We are really similar. And then he got, his family was like, we need you to get married. Uh, and like kind of like this is what you need to do in order to stay in the family approval and so at 22 he got married he went on two dates with this woman like so so the parents arranged the marriage and on the second date all the family was waiting outside to see if they were going to be engaged so he got engaged to her after like literally meeting her twice they got married they had two kids I, I asked this guy if he wanted to be on my podcast I was like I would love to interview you but he was saying that still, like a lot of his, even though he's out of the religion, a lot of his um, family, like, don't know what how he is now. Like, they don't know his authentic self, and he has kids, and so he's just like, for the safety of my relationship with my children right now, I don't know, blah, blah, blah. Anyways, I just, I would love to manifest that he feels safe, that I can share him on my podcast with all of you, because it's such a beautiful story. So anyways, he moved to London, and then he got into the sexual scene there, and like the swinger scene, and like the sexual empowerment scene, and um, I think he said he's also hosted some of these parties before, and he just had the, such a grounded, like safe vibration, and we just like sat on the couch outside uh, on the tea room and like held hands and talked, and I was like, do you want to be my friend in real life? <laughs> and he's like, yeah, I do. Yeah, let's be friends. Uh, and, you know, he's a cancer. Son, he's, his astrology is a cancer. And I'm a Scorpio. And, like, we're just water, emotional energy. Just, uh, yeah, it was really beautiful. And we, like, went inside and had a little makeout session and just, like, talk some more. And and I just told him, I was like, I would love to, like, be friends in real life. And he was like, I, w- I want you to bring these parties to London. Like, let me know. I can connect you. We can get it going. And this is the vibration that I kept feeling last night was the universe inviting me to expand the parties. Because I've always had this vision to have these experiences happening worldwide. I would love for everyone to be able to have this experience in such a safe way and especially have it be women led. I would love to train women facilitators to lead these because there's something just really special about a woman leading this. One, it's such a rebellious thing for a woman to be in her power sexually. And two, it makes all the other women feel safe because, you know, if a woman feels safe in these type of situations, then everyone feels safe, you know? Um, if you're a woman, you understand what I mean, <laughs> because like we just have so much like f- literally from a physical safety perspective, let alone energetic, emotional, but like, anyways, don't need to go into that, but basically that's, that's my vision. Uh, and so like, he was just like, you really need to expand these. Like I can see you doing these worldwide. And there's this dating app called field F E E L D. I h- highly recommend you getting on it. If you've never been field F E E L D. And he was saying that this app does parties um, like as a kind of like an advertisement and also a nice experience for users. They do parties kind of like this, this type of play party experience that I organize. And he was like, why don't you partner with like a brand and have them like help you build out this global impact? So I'm considering that. I've actually had a couple um, sex positive startups come up to me recently. This is some of the opportunities I've been having, Um, but all of them haven't felt completely aligned. And that's something where I feel like this is something that happens. If you are close to manifesting your your actual like mission, thing you're meant to do in in your lifetime, the universe will give you things that are very, very close to it. So like I had a startup recently that was like, we want you to be the face of our company. It's this... um, sex positive like escort app and it was recommended through a friend a very close friend of mine um the connection and so it's, it's like friends of friends soul family and I really considered it seriously and then I was like no I am actually unemployable like I will never work for someone else again 
I will invite uh, sponsorship. I will invite funding. I will invite a brand partner. I will invite partnership. But it, I am leading whatever I'm doing. It is my vibration that is the lead and setting it. I'm not going to report to anyone else. I have done that enough. And it is it is not my timeline anymore. My life is about me shining my light brightly. Um, but I felt like these were all kind of tests of like getting closer and closer because my real vision is me leading this and it, the play party is expanding globally. Um, and yeah, if you have any intuitive leads of what I should do next with that, if you have any connections uh, with any brands, sex positive brands or dating apps, please reach out to me. I would love to chat. I'm s uh, Really, this is how the universe works. You say it out loud and then things come in. So even me saying this out loud is already telling the universe, I'm ready for this type of expansion. I'm excited for it. My vision is to have these in every main city in the world, continuous like going where I go and like launch them, train the team, make sure it's people that I feel safe like holding this brand and then they just keep going. Um, so so that was really beautiful and I'm gonna hang out with him soon, um, this, uh, sometime this week. And then I met with another uh, man, so <laughs> something to know is that so many people message me about the play parties that I have a, sometimes I just like don't have enough space or energy to respond to all of them. And a lot of them are like through like Instagram message requests. So sometimes they get lost. Uh, so anyways, I got a message from one of my close friends in Chiang Mai, Rachel. You, you know her from some of the blogs and I interviewed her a couple times. So Rachel hits me up and she's like, Look, so one of my friends uh, wants to come to your play party. And he um, he sent you a message, but I don't think it got through. And he's basically like asked me to let you know that he's like a safe guy and really nice and would be a great addition to the party vibrationally. And I was like, okay, like I trust Rachel, you know, like Rachel's my home girl. Rachel, if you're listening to this, I love you. Um. So I messaged this guy and I was like, hey, just so you know, like I'll put you on the waiting list. We um, are waiting for more, some more women to sign up and blah, blah, blah. Anyways, I was able to let him come in. And he told me like through our conversation that we had, uh, he had hosted uh, some of these parties before. I think, um, I think, yeah, he's from California as well. And we just had a really great connection like online. And then I just had this intuitive lead like, uh, to ask him to um, host the men's circle, which is like a 15-minute experience where I just told him some things that the men need to know about the party and then break them off into groups and um, have them, you know, talk to each other about a couple things. And he was like, yeah, I'd be down to do this. And so I hadn't even met him yet, and I was just like, already he's helping host the party with me, which I love. And he did such an amazing job. And... Um, and like did it from like a non-ego perspective. Like he wasn't trying to get anything out of it. He wasn't making it about him. He just was holding a ground in divine masculine energy to help the men feel safe, co communicate the information they needed to know. And yeah, it was really beautiful. And then him and I were talking outside and he was like, I, I was connecting to someone else beautifully and he was like I don't want to interrupt you I would love to like get a coffee sometime and share with you and I said no I want to like what he's like I just have something I want to share with you I'm like I'm here like let's let's go like tell me like I'm curious tell me what it is and he was like well I just want you to know that um I don't normally listen to podcasts but I saw when I was looking you know to come to the play party I, I was checking your Instagram and I saw like a clip from one of your last uh podcasts that you made and the clip he's like the clip resonated with me so much that I had to click on it immediately and watch the whole podcast. And he's like, and normally when I listen to podcasts, I'm like multitasking, you know, it's kind of just something in the background. But he's like, but with you, like there is something about your vibration and what you're saying that I was like glued to the screen. Like I couldn't not, I couldn't look away. And I was like, wow, thank you. That's really like this amazing reflection. And he's like, yeah, you say things that that uh, I think all the time, but I have a really hard time putting into words. And, and he was just like, I really want to thank you and like honor you for doing this and please keep going. And like, he's like, I've already recommended you to multiple people. And he's just like, why are you not, um, he's like, why do more people not follow you? Like, like basically like, why are you not more famous or something? And I'm like, 
I'm hearing this universe, I'm listening. Um, and I said to him, I was like, it's happening now. I think I needed to be, I think what it was is like, <laughs> I'm going to say this and I, it'd be funny if you do, but like basically if you go to some of my older podcasts when I was like doing remote work stuff, uh, older YouTube videos, sorry. If you go on my YouTube and you go backwards, like four years, five years ago, it is very hard for me to watch those videos because the vibration that I was in was basically before COVID, I was moving through the world in a very masculine driven way. And also in a way where I wasn't actually feeling safe in my body. <sighs> and when you watch those videos, you can feel that vibration. And when, but I was very like, I need to create things in the world. I want to make impact. I want to help people. But it was coming from this place of like very masculine driven, like pushing energy, which is just not authentic to me at all. And it didn't feel good in my body. And then I was like sharing that vibration with the world. And then COVID happened and I came to the island and I like built, built this beautiful community here and adopted my dog and like, you know, went naked to the waterfall every day and the beach every day. And like just really dropped into my feminine and really like took ayahuasca for the first time, DMT for the first time and really like healed. I used this opportunity of feeling very safe and cocooned here on the island to heal myself, feel safe to drop into my feminine, yummy, flowy self. But then I kind of just got cocooned in that too much and I wasn't m creating things in the world. And I also, I think I also was like still up until recently wasn't sure if it was completely safe to play the game of life. Like basically, is it safe to shine my light with the world? You know, like, is it actually safe? Is it safer just to stay here on the island and hide? And then when I broke up with my last partner, I was like, no, actually it is very safe. And I'm not gonna just sit here on the sidelines when this beautiful game of life is pl being played by everyone else. I'm gonna fucking play this game of life to the max. Like, okay, universe, let's go. How much impact can I make? How much money can I make? How big can we make this? And how much of an amazing community can I build? How much can I help people and empower them? How many souls can I activate to come into their full power, their empowerment, their authentic selves? Like literally light up the grid vibrationally, let's go. And since that has happened, this is the vibration that you feel in this podcast. It is not my ego. Is It is me. Every single time that I start a podcast, I close my eyes and I say to my higher self, whatever you need to come through right now, I'm here in service. So that was another thing this guy was asking me last night. He was like, do you, do you write out what you're going to say in your podcast? And I said, no, what happens normally is I'll be in the middle of a conversation with someone just like throughout my life, like throughout the day. And someone will say something or I will say something like a download will come through and I'll be like, I'm sorry, you need, I need to hold on because I need to write this down in my, I have like a little notes in my, I have a podcast note and like in my phone and I just write down like one sentence of whatever the download was or, you know, whatever, like two sentences or something. And then I make a whole hour long podcast based on those two sentences and like whatever is channeled through. So anyways, it was really nice to connect to, with this lovely man. And, um, I feel like we're going to be really good friends. And I've been asking the universe for grounded, safe, emotionally mature, um, amazing supportive men in my life that are nourishing like like I choose to have men in my life who show up and take up space in a way that is nourishing supportive holding the physical container like this guy like I hadn't even met him and when he was on those way to the party he's like can I bring anything else can I help you with anything like this is the energy of the men that I choose in my life now and this was he was an external reflection of me choosing that as my standard and holding to that standard and I really honor that. And I'm very grateful to have met him and to hear his reflections and his beautiful words of encouragement and support. So thank you. <sighs> um, oh, and then the last one I want to share. Okay, one more. I'll share one more. So there's this, this beautiful man who is Italian. And he's been coming to the play party since the very beginning, like, almost three years ago when I first started them, I've had over 2000 people come through these play parties and um, like in Copenhagen in Berlin. And this beautiful man, he has been coming from almost the beginning. Like when I started them with my original crew of lockdown friends and he lives in Bangkok. Uh, he has a beautiful job 
working in a, a nonprofit, um, making global impact, like actually moving and shaking things in a big way in the world, which I really honor and respect. I didn't even know this until last night. Like, I, it's so funny. I meet so many people through the play party experience knowing nothing about them on the outside. So, like, I see them in a very deeply transfer s transformative moment and then know nothing about them outside of that so it's really it was really funny to like hear like oh yeah I I do this like job that is very important and making a huge impact in the world and I was like wow I really honor that <laughs> now this is like you're such a more interesting person to me now um and anyway so he him and I were talking and connecting and he was like Brittany again he this, this is like literally the universe was just like this is all I heard last night was him saying like all these beautiful men saying why are you not more famous and he he was like I send your podcast to everyone like I just really believe in you and I support you and he's like why don't you have your own tv show like literally the world needs to feel this vibration this activation this like feeling safe in their bodies feeling safe to be in their sexual power like I would love to see you on a global scale. And I was just like, okay, universe, I'm listening. I And the, f the, the interesting thing to say here is that this is not the first time I've heard this. And this is not, like I actually have had two serious offers of TV shows over the last couple of years. But both of them were with me, no, actually three, <laughs> three. The last three partners I've had while I was dating these last three partners, every single time there was a TV show that was offered to me. Um, and the first one was uh, a Netflix TV show wh where uh, they wanted me to be a host um, and it was about cults and they wanted me to go interview other people who had been in cults and just like kind of host them and talk about it. Like how, how was the experience for them? How did they get out? Da, 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 da. The second one was... Um, Airbnb wanted to um, like follow me around and uh, basically me being my flowy traveling self and sharing this vibration and about like living your best life, living your dream life. Here's me in this apron. Like, and they were going to give me like unlimited Airbnb uh, stay and um, you know, like a salary for sharing, like basically being a, like a promotion for Airbnb. And the third one was uh, Vice wanted to follow me and my ex-partner around um, on Copanyong and kind of like they wanted us to create a retreat experience that kind of held all of the different things that the island offers into one retreat so they could film it, uh, which included the, one, the play party experience. And um, I was asking myself, like, why did none of these come through? It wasn't that I said no to any of these. It was just that they kind of like the opportunities just kind of fizzled out. And I recognize now that all of them wasn't me in my own vibration. So I'm not talking negatively about my partners at all. I just mean right now in this moment in my life, my vibration is coming through so brightly and purely and with just so much energy to help and like really I just want to show up and help people care about each other and create community and like this very feminine nurturing um, loving vibration this is what I want to activate in people this is what I want to share and fill them up with and in the past I was me plus whatever vibration my partner was in that moment and somehow that added up to it didn't work out but maybe it didn't work out because it was meant to be me completely in my own vibration, just shining my light. So I'm here, universe. I'm listening. And I did a really beautiful meditation last night on um, just allowing myself to receive that. Because I, ever since I was little, I've always known that I was meant to be famous. And I actually have run away from this a lot of my life because I valued my freedom more than... And this has been channeled uh, in a lot of spiritual readings I've had that I've had many past lives where the conflict or the opportunity for growth that I've had to um, go through was my responsibility to serving my community and my responsibility to my own needs for freedom. Um, so for most of my life, I actually haven't allowed myself to fully shine because you know, a lot of people want to be famous, but they don't under like, understand that fame actually is responsibility. Like in, in tribal times, 
when you're a leader of a community, you actually, it's like you are serving, you are showing up to help. It's a job. It's like, it's like you put an effort, you know, and here in today's world, people just think famous equals, I don't know, Instagram followers and money. And for me, that's not what it means. It's like, okay, I have more eyes on me to, so that I can help more people. So it's more responsive. I take it very seriously. I take it as like, I'm here to help guide these people to their own empowerment, to activate them, inspire them. And it's really beautiful. And also it takes energy and it's like, it's a choice. It's like you show up, you know, it's a job (laughs) and I'm ready for it now. I'm here, I'm showing up. And also saying all of this out loud creates that reality of more of this opportunity for me to expand. And really basically right now I'm in full expansion mode. So many opportunities. So yeah, so that last guy, the Italian, um, he was like, you know, two and a half years ago when I came to my first play party, do you remember this kiss that we had? And I was like, I'm sorry, I don't. (laughs) And I really, like, I really just don't remember. And he was like, well, for me, I still think about that kiss. And it was really beautiful. And I was like, well, do you want to have another kiss tonight? And he was like, oh, I would love to. I was like, okay, I want to finish drinking my tea, but then I would love to have another kiss with you. So we ended up going inside and, oh my gosh, just having so much like Tantra energy flow between us and like making out and rolling around and um, yeah, just the kind of like sensual play where like it wasn't, it didn't end up being sexual in any way, which was totally beautiful it's actually like I've had so many sexual experiences in my life it's actually new for me to go slow and to really enjoy the sensual build-up and like it got to the point where like I had goosebumps over my whole body because I was so turned on and like the energy was flowing between us fluidly and we both were like moaning and we were in the middle of the living room we put all the mattresses in one area and like everyone's talking and laughing around us and I actually heard at one point someone say Oh, it, the play party's like, you know, because I ended at one and I asked everyone to be gone by one thirty so I can go to bed. And someone's like, oh, it's already one thirty, And then someone else was like, well, Brittany's having a good time. So I think we're fine because I was just like fully rolling around and just go. And I just started laughing. I was like, yeah, I'm having a great time. So I think people didn't end up leaving until like 2.30. And then it takes me a while to kind of like ground in the energy because this it's really like this orgasmic <laughs> orgasmic organic ecstasy like yeah like this orgasmic energy that just kind of builds in the house and the house is like it's got high ceilings but it's a lot of energy to hold especially for 45 people so for me to like sleep in that energy let's just say the dreams are very juicy <laughs> but it takes me a while to like come down into like a calm state where I can go to sleep So anyways, that was the play party. And like all of these men are like, I want to hang out. Let's hang out. And where I'm at right now is like, I'm super excited to um, get to know people on a, there's a word, if you don't know this, it's called demisexual. And what it means is like someone who has to have an emotional connection with someone before they're able to feel any sexual feelings, like before their body's able to open. And I actually, I was talking to someone about this in the tea room last night and they were like, this girl was like, that's a word. And I was like, yeah, there's a word for everything apparently. Like demisexual. But I said, I was like, I actually believe that everyone is demisexual. Like everyone wants an emotional connection first, like on a heart. Like if we're really getting down to the basics, like everyone wants connection. Everyone would love an emotional connection with someone. And of course you can explore all the different things, but I'm telling you on a baseline level, this is what we all want. Um, And for me in the past, it was um, just fun to explore all the different options. So like, yeah, just play with someone without knowing them, to have it be a physical connection. All of of the things are great to explore. What I'm realizing now is that is, (laughs) Afro's making a lot of noise in the back, she's so cute. Um, It's really nice to, for me to explore the idea of taking it super slow with someone romantically and just allowing my body to feel safe and having a lot of like, they're like basically being friends first. And a lo- like, you know, like we have all the time in the world. Like where are we all rushing to? When you, c- when you come into connection out of the energy of abundance, there's no need to rush. There's no need to run into bed with someone. It's like, 
why don't you just let the spiciness build up? Why don't you let the juiciness like escalate a little bit more before you, you know, ejaculate that everywhere? It's, it's really all energy. And the more that you're able to allow the energy to build, allow it to flow in a organic way without having to be physical first, I just find, for me, this is a new, new exploration. So it's exciting. I'm excited. That's what I want to say. So with these men, like a lot of them like want to take me out on dates and explore things and do all the stuff. And I've just said to them straight up, I, I am down to explore. And also just so you know, there's no, I'm not going to sleep with you anytime soon. I'm not, uh, th- I, th- it is more interesting for me to have an emotional connection with you first than a physical one. And right now I'm actually like, I am dating myself. I'm connecting to myself. Um, And it's really beautiful. It's so beautiful to come from this place of abundance of like, I don't need this. You know, I pleasure myself really well. And I, uh, I've also had all of the pleasure in the world. You know, like, I was talking to a friend about this the other day, and he was like, you know, everything you do, if you do it to the max, it's like it kind of loses its uh, juiciness. And I said to them, I was like, yeah, I f- kind of feel that like hosting so many play parties and seeing, see, witnessing so much sexual exploration, being part of so much sexual exploration. And he's like, yeah, so maybe it's just not exciting for you anymore. What's exciting for you right now? And I was like, spending time by myself. He's like, great, then explore that. How does that feel for you? And I was like, it's so new and exciting and like creating this energy bubble for myself where I'm like asking what does Brittany need right now and how can I help my inner child feel safe and juicy and playful and he's like so why are you judging yourself and I'm like I don't know why am I judging I guess I just thought that I was this specific person he's like you can be whoever you want you can be all the people maybe this is just what you need right now in order to recalibrate, in order to come back to yourself, in order to get to the next level of your whatever game of life you're playing. And I was like, thank you for this reflection. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> this is exactly what I needed to hear. Thank you. I love my friends. They're great. Um, oh, so the last thing I wanted to say was, um, my friend told me to do this. If you are listening to this on Spotify and you haven't um, rated the channel yet, I invite you to put um, a five-star rating on there because it helps other people to find it. Like organically, Spotify will recommend it more the more uh, ratings it has. So I invite you to support that. Expansion. I'm in full expansion right now. And for me, that also is inviting you as the community to activate you in order to spread the word. And so if you have any of the podcasts that resonate with you, I invite you to share it with your community or any one specific if it comes up and you think they would like it. Um, for me, it's about spreading this impact and this like vibration of empowerment and activation. Um, and yeah, if you want to like put any comments in the YouTube or like the YouTube video, all of it helps spread the word and all of it mag- means a lot to me. It's really beautiful. Um, so that's it for me. Um, wow. So much juiciness in this episode and I'm sending you all this love (laughs) from my couple hours of sleep and, uh, wow, still glowing and basking in the energy of the play party experience. It was, ah, so juicy. Um, okay. I hope you have an amazing day and I will see you in the next episode.